Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to FVD Elements, and this time by special request of the G-Man805, I'm going to be showing you how to do some basic helices in FVD. Uh, he said he was having trouble with that, so I said I would go ahead and show him how to do flat turns and a sort of B&M style helix. I actually uh, said I would do the helix from Goliath on Six Flags Over Georgia. So you can see we've already done that. I started with the basic flat turn here, then we've got the twisted airtime hill, and over here we have uh, what looks like Flight of Fear, but it's actually uh, seven tries I made to get an accurate recreation of the helix on Goliath. Uh, I do want to stress for all of you who are new to FED, it's not this difficult to make a helix, uh, a downward helix. It's just that I was trying to make a very accurate recreation, so that's what took me so many tries. So let's quickly take a look at what I did first, uh, just so you can see how bad it looked. Uh, this is the first try, just trying to sketch it out basically, and you see it really does not look that good. Uh, the, the angles are all wrong, the banking is weird, riding it is strange, everything about it is wrong. So tried several more times and finally we got to something that is much more accurate. Uh, I looked at many different pictures from various angles and it, it really is looking as accurate as I'm going to get it. So uh, if you can see from here and also from down here that if you compare to some of the pictures I have of the ride it looks pretty accurate. So that's what I'm going to do for the Goliath turn. So first though we're going to go back in time and we're going to watch me recreate this uh, little flat turn right here in real time just so you can see how simple that is. So here we go. All right, y'all, here we are uh, back in time. We're getting ready to start the first helix. Uh, we'll start with just a basic flat turn, and you will see that all I've done so far is create a new four section just because I'm trying to uh, watch out. Sorry, the cat is here with me, and he is trying to participate in the video. So, um, <clears throat> All you'll see is I created a new four section just for this helix because I'm trying to separate this for people who are downloading the files and want to see the separate sections. It'll be easier for them to find things. So here we have the hammerhead and stingle dive and now we're going to do a helix. And all I did was kind of flatten this out to get it as close to 1G right here. Uh, normal force. Uh, so we're ready to go. So you'll find that helixes are actually pretty easy. The first time I ever tried to do one uh, I used to have a lot of trouble with them, but they're very simple. So let's just start with a flat turn. We've got one G here. I'm going to go ahead and that takes up this whole space. So let me just move this back a little bit, take off dynamic, and I'm going to start the roll about right here. So let's append, uh, and let me just put an extra normal force here for just a moment. Pen makes this a little bit longer, and let's just start and say 90 degrees. We take a ride on it, it looks weird. That's okay. So, what we want to do, uh, if you think about a helix, what happens is the two things are happening, uh, especially if you're going from normal G's to into a helix, two things are happening. The track is banking, and the forces are increasing. So, instead of just taking this up to normal G's, we're going to take it up to say three. Whoops, I'm on the wrong thing there. We're going to take it up to about 3.2. And I usually go. I know a lot of people use 3.5 as their norm. I usually go a little bit lower because if you look at table the table of values for what the human body can tolerate, especially if you're doing something like a helix where you're going to have sustained positive G's. Uh, there's only a, a certain time frame that the, the human body can withstand that. So I tend to go, uh, if I'm going to do something that's really sustained, I tend to go about 3.2, 3.3 because I've noticed in videos that show actual forces on rides uh, that things tend to spike up to 3.5 and higher versus just stay there. I mean, obviously there are exceptions to that. but. Uh, this is what I've been doing a lot lately, and I think it makes the coaster seem just a little bit more rideable. So, you can see here that we've got the, the turn, but it's going upward, and right now we're trying to do a flat turn, that's not what we want. So I'm just going to increase this a little bit more, and start it a little bit earlier by moving the time that it was at uh, no turn back just a bit. 
So right there, you see we've got the beginnings of a flat turn. And you, out, you definitely want to use a quartic function for this because you don't want the, the roll to be continuous. You want it to roll and then stop rolling. So if we append this, you'll see. And then if we go ahead and make this dynamic, you'll see that we have the beginnings of a helix here. It's not 100% flat, but that's all right. You're just trying to get the basic idea of how to do this. So if I, I've now made the this dynamic right here. So if I increase the normal force, we'll start to see a helix form. And this is a downward helix, and the easiest way, let's say that we want to make this totally flat, just a flat turn. It's very simple to do that. Just play around here with the roll just a bit, and so you can make it completely flat. You see it's almost 100% flat there. We go to the side, it's still going downward a little bit. Uh, let me just try to bring this. Let's get to about right there. And then, so you see we have basically a flat turn. One thing we can do though is take this off dynamic. We're back on the roll. Take this off dynamic. Let's go back about 1.2 or so. Append another one, make it dynamic. And now if we change this, who's calling me? Hold on just a minute. Somebody's calling. Eh, never mind, it wasn't important. All right, so uh, if we get this uh, roll right here and start playing around with it just a little bit, we can definitely flatten this out. So just adjust it a little bit. So that's how you make a basic flat turn. The reason this is so high in the air uh, is just because of the way we came into it. If you do something that's flatter on the ground, it's it's easy to do this. But this is the basic technique for making a helix. And like I said, to make it go upwards or downwards, you can just adjust the roll that you have. And you can adjust it within the helix as well, which we'll do later on in the we're going to do two helixes like i said earlier we're going to do a flat helix and then we're going to do uh, uh sort of a bnms helix so we've got our flat helix here let me now show you how to do a basic it's pretty boring this coaster is really going to suck by the way but what are you going to do all right so come over here i want to do a twisted airtime hill for you and coming out of a helix is the perfect place to do that. So I'm going to show you how to do that very simply. So let me get this back to another about a minute at that roll. And then we're going to start coming up. So these are easy to do too. So once again, we're going to change the... roll speed and let me just extend this a little bit longer because right now what's going to happen is it's not going far enough so it's going to twist an airtime over there and that's not particularly where I want it. I want to continue the helix a little bit more so I extend this positive G's right here and then I'll just add a little bit more here which will move it over just a bit you see. Alright so that's about where I want it. Let me append this All right, so that, the green section that we see right here is about where I want the twisted airtime hill to be. I want it to change directions rapidly and twist the other direction. So this is really easy to do too. It's all about, as always in FED, it's almost always about getting the element you want is almost always about how you set up going into that element. So you see right here, we've got ourselves going up at an angle. So let me just extend this a little bit and make this a little shorter. Wait, is this, yeah. To about where I want the twisting to start. We'll say about right there. All right, so I'm going to pen and make it about 1.5 seconds and make this about 1.5 seconds. All right. So you see that looks nothing like what we want. But if we take this, this uh, <clears throat> normal force section that we just added change it to quartic and now we're going to take this down so that we get a spike of negative G's right in the middle and then do the same thing with the roll speed 
So I'm going to roll it uh, negative 180 and just see where that takes us. So that's basically what we want. The only problem is it's not exactly where we want it on the roll. So if we go ahead, wait a minute, let me add this and add this and move this back a little bit. So again, it's how you set it up that indicates where it actually starts to happen. And we'll move this back a little bit. And we'll probably have to extend this a bit as well. So if we come and ride this, you see that the twist is happening. You can see right here is the negative G's. That's a lot of negative G's for a and m negative one. But the twist is happening basically right at the same time as the negative G's. So I'll fool around with this just a little bit to get it more perfected because I want that centered. You can see right now it's kind of the twist is happening a little bit later. So I'm just going to try to move this back a little bit and see what we can come up with. Just for shaping that looks a little bit better. And here's where you can start to do like 1.72, 1.73 just to try to get it 100% perfect. Uh, and then if you want it going down more, or up or down, or you want it to flatten out, you just keep playing with the roll speed, depending on what you want. I'm going to go about like right there. Let me take a ride on that real fast. And you can also change the snappiness of it by changing the duration of this part right here. The we, you see we've got almost two seconds here. So uh, if I made it 1.5 and changed as well this to 1.5, it would be much more snappy. What well, is 1.5? <clears throat> I'm going to take that back to 1.9 because I liked it there. Wait, actually 1.2 looks pretty good. Uh, 1.9 is better, I think. All right, so that's the basics of how you do it. What I'm going to do now is that was the live section of this. I'm going to fool around with it just to get it back to the way I want it. Um, and we'll go back to the finished track. Uh, and of course, I will upload what you need uh, if you want to download the file. All right, we're back. And you can see the only real change I made was to extend the duration of this uh, negative G hill. Instead of having our flat turn so high up in the air, I decided to make it lower to the ground. So that was easy enough to accomplish. Just extended the duration of the uh, floater air on the normal force graph, and then just extended the, uh, the straight section of the roll graph until we got closer to the ground. So. That's just the easy way to uh, make it a little bit uh, more realistic there because the turn looked a little weird before. So then if we come over here, I'm not definitely not creating this in real time because it took a long time. It took a lot of trial and error, but uh, let's move to the get it in space where we can look at it. And I think that looks pretty nice, actually. I like the way that looks. All right, so let's move over here. And this is basically uh, where it begins. So all I really did was uh, take the, the ride up to about zero G's and then leveled out. And this is where the turning starts. Uh, so the same sort of concept. Uh, you're just doing using a quartic function and uh, rolling it a certain degree until you get roughly what you want. Now you'll notice that it keeps changing here and this is because I wanted it to keep continually go downward uh, to match the B&M, uh, the Goliath turnaround as closely as possible. Again, uh, recreating something is much more difficult than it is uh, just to create something from scratch on your own, so uh, it took some time. But there are four sections here where the roll changes slightly. And you can see it kind of goes in a downward uh, line here, it's sort of linear almost there. Uh, so at first we put a major roll and what was happening was it was kind of going back up a little bit just to maintain the norm or the, the normal force is only, what is it right here, about 2.4 or so. All right, so I've never ridden Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. The last time I was there, they didn't have it. So I'm not exactly certain what the forces feel like on this uh, turn. I imagine they're probably strong at first and then they kind of uh, 
get weaker. And the reason I imagine that is because the coaster does uh, sort of really open up around here. And plus, uh, they just can't sustain a high level of force for that long in general. So uh, you can see here, I only went up to about 2.4. And the reason I did that was because I was really trying to match what it looked like in the pictures I was using. And this is what got me closest to it. Uh, and then it goes up just a little bit. It gets a little bit tighter. And then as we go swooping down around here, it opens up. And the way we do that is to decrease the normal force. And then finally, once we get to the bottom, uh, it increases all the way up to four. It spikes to four right there. But uh, it immediately goes back down so that we can come into this airtime hill right here. And while all that's happening, uh, the roll is changing ever so slightly throughout the entire thing. And then right here, I roll it back to zero. So you can see it's at uh, negative 0.241. Uh, since I have the roll to zero function, if I want to make it perfectly zero, I could add a little section right here in the roll, uh, maybe about a second long or something, and over here I would choose the roll to zero function. If you want, uh, several people have asked me about this, if you want the version of FBD that I'm using, which is an older one than the one that's released right now, uh, my version has the roll to zero function. So I have put a link up to download that in the description. Uh, the one thing I will say is it, it can be a little bit buggy, um, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, but you can also see here, just by using a regular portic function and rolling, I'm able to obtain almost zero for all intents and purposes. This is zero. So it, it, not having a roll to zero function is really not a big deal. So that's how I did that. Uh, let's take a ride on it, actually. Let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. Oh, we're back at the beginning. Let me just roll back a little bit and then I'm going to show you a neat trick one thing that's actually easy to do in FVD versus hand building uh, and that'll take a split second let's get back here to roughly the stingle dive all right we're coming out of the stingle dive Woo everybody's screaming woo -hoo, woo 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 all right so I like this part head choppers I haven't actually tested this to make sure it needs clearance but I'm fairly certain it does even though it looks close uh, once you start doing this a little while in FPD, you kind of get a feel for it. I'm pretty sure that'll meet the uh, clearance envelope. So into the flat turn, you can see we're sustaining about 3.2 G's here. Then over the twisted airtime hill, and you can see I clean that up just a little bit. And then up into the helix. Down, 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 picking up speed. And over the top, and that's where we're stopping for now. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. Something there reminded me of something I wanted to tell you. Let me go back for just a second because there was some little piece of information I wanted to give you. I can't remember what it was. Ah, all right. So, let's look at this. You see that this is curving to the left, just like Goliath. If you want this to go to the right, this is a really easy, quick way to do it. Just take all the pieces, of the uh, roll graphs that you did, and make them go the opposite direction. So, negative 7.1, it looks like crap. Negative 3.9, so it looks like crap. Keep going. And take the negative off of that. And there you go, it's in a totally opposite direction. I like that. That's one thing that's definitely easier in FED. There's some things that are easier in hand building. There's some things that are easier in FED. Uh, this is definitely one thing that's easier. So, uh, like I said, there will be a link in the description to this updated file that has all these elements in it thus far. The hammerhead, the stingle dive, and now the helice section. I'm still taking requests for... Uh, uh, elements that you all would like to see me build thus far i have requests for corkscrews uh flying snake dive beyond vertical drop and a bat wing i did i had planned to do a bat wing already and corkscrews so uh, i think the next video will probably be corkscrews because that was the first request i got in my last video after this one so but if you have anything you want to see just let me know and i'll be happy to build it for you so uh, otherwise i will see you next time and enjoy the ride